What's a misconception about your profession that you're tired of hearing? Before we start with the first story, please hit subscribe and ring the notification bell to stay updated with us. Story 1. I'm an attorney. A lot of people, maybe most people, have this bizarre idea that a court case turns on who has the better attorney. As if we're wizards, hurling eldritch beams of light at one another until one of our minds snap and the empty husk slumps to the floor. The judge whispers a fey enchantment, his fingers curling in an unknown, arcane sign, and the victor is bathed in emerald light. A bad attorney can absolutely sink your case, but once you reach a level of basic competence, the facts of the case are almost exclusively what drive victory or defeat. I can make clever arguments all day, but if you beat the sh out of an orphan to steal his Pokemon cards, my twisted magic will not avail you. Story 2. Also a lawyer. The one that gets me is the idea that we're unethical tricksters just trying to run up our fees. First, there are some slimy lawyers out there, but I think as a whole we're probably more ethical than the general population. Our entire career depends on having a license that can be taken away for minor ethical lapses. We're also not pulling some kind of voodoo to win cases. The facts are what they are, and the law is defined within some pre-existing boundaries. I'm just trying to put the two together in the light, most favorable to my client. And we're not running up fees intentionally. It's hard work and I'm much more worried about my reputation in getting repeat business referrals than I am in doing as much work as I can justify in. Your case right now. Story 3. I've got several jobs. Here's the ones I put the most time into. Line cook. Nobody's messing with your food. Well, almost nobody. Just like in any profession, there are some psychopaths out there who want to make other people suffer. But they're a tiny minority. And they get weeded out of all but the worst kitchens. The simple fact is that no matter how much of a jerk you are as a customer, no even semi-rational cook is going to risk their job just so you eat something gross. None of us are rolling in cash to the point where we can afford to get fired. Romance novel author. There's a difference between people writing erotica on AO and people publishing romance novels. And it's basically that we're just in it for the money. I have a lot of passion for writing, but not writing this stuff. I don't write things that I personally think are sexy. I write things that people will buy. That typically means catering to a very specific market of the sort of people who buy romance novels, which is a demographic I don't fit into. Sex cam manager. I guess the primary misconception is that nobody is doing this job. Or that, if they are, they aren't really taking it seriously. My work is all about getting the most eyes on the streamer, and thus the most money. I'm not getting off on the content, just as I'm not getting off on my own romance novels. I've got a couple other lower tier hustles as well. I like variety in my work. Story 4. Call Center Customer Service Agent, Telecom. For the last 12 years, I've had to hold the hand of thousands of customers through the phone. It's not an easy job. I have to remember the specs of all the new cellular devices, all the codes for our ancient Dos Besa S400 system, and above all that, I have to deal with people who have issues breathing and speaking at the same time. It's exhausting. At the end of the day, my body is awake and ready, but my mind is mush. Oh, and I do it in two languages. I used to work for a call center, but for an attorney's office, and let me tell you, the amount of hand-holding and explaining that I had to do also in two languages was crazy. The attorney's office was for personal injury, and we would get calls from people who just got into an accident. The ambulance nor the cops had come yet. They had no information to give me about the other person, and I could hear the sirens coming from the background and not to mention all the other people who call for everything but what we specialized in. Story 5. I work in digital marketing, and too many people do not understand the difference between marketers and web developers. I do not know how to code. I cannot troubleshoot your website from a technical standpoint. I cannot build you a website from scratch, unless I use a service like WordPress or Wix, which you could probably do yourself. My job is to market your services to bring in customers and work on your search engine optimization and or manage your social media. I can create content for your website and upload it, but if your website is erroring out and is totally broken, that's not my job and I can't help you. Too many companies throw websites together and don't employ a web developer and get shocked when eventually their website just doesn't function. Also, not every marketer is a graphic designer. I'm relatively good at graphic design, but graphic design is often a job in itself. It's in the same vein that people who are graphic designers aren't always good at marketing. It's one thing to design and generate the content, and another thing to promote it well and bring in customers using it. Story 6. Janitor, Custodian. 
Any service job, really. No, not everybody who works those jobs is dumb with no prospects ambitions. Things happen in life, be it health issues, personal family issues. I never understood how someone seeing another person working a job like that can look down on them and treat them like dirt. A separate pet peeve is, I don't feel like putting this item back where it belongs, or I'll just make this mess and not clean it up because it's somebody else's job, or I'm just letting them earn their paycheck. No, you're an <laughs> To end this on a positive note though, as someone who's had a lot of these types of jobs, being polite, saying thank you, and being respectful to any service retail restaurant worker, or anyone really, are simple things that don't take much effort and can brighten up someone's day. Story 7. Writer. Their eyes are green because that's the color I thought of when I built the character. It's not dead deep most of the time. Also, no, I don't want to read the first draft of the book you started when you were 12. That's such a great idea. Believe me, none of us write well at 12, and no, I won't read it for free. It's very common in an artistic world. The moment there is a certain status, that person can do a little as breath and some people will see genius in it. In Germany, there was this established famous writer who suddenly published books where suddenly the letter was removed from all its words. You had university professors intellectuals coming out of the woodwork with the wildest theories of the ingeniousness of this move. The writer was initially reluctant to reveal his big secret. Later on, he said it was just his typewriter had a malfunction on that letter and he didn't bother to correct it, assuming the editors would correct it. But they didn't because they assumed because there was some mastermind move behind it. Story 8. Tech Support. We didn't start out angry, turn it off, then turn it on again. No, we're not lazy, that really does solve a majority of problems. And no, shutting off your monitor is not shutting down your computer. When we ask you if it's plugged in, follow the cord all the way from your computer to the wall. If the computer gives you a message with an error code, write it down or take a screenshot. Describe the problem, but only what is necessary. I don't care why you were emailing your aunt. I do care about the message that popped up when you click send. If I come to look at your computer, get out of the way. No, I cannot fix anything if you are sitting in your chair in front of your computer. Printer problem? Take it out back and shoot it. I would rather work on anything else before printer problems. Story 9. College Professor The majority of my time is actually spent conducting original research and writing grants for this research. This is what my bosses evaluate me on. In my field, social science, public policy, and a lot of other fields, we want our research to actually make the world a better, more informed place, which is easier some days than others. Most days, nobody reads our shit except the 30 other people who care about the same little niche thing we do. People assume higher education is K-12 teaching light because we have typically one and minus four classes per week depending on where you work and the type of position you have. Those of us who want to do a good job will put tremendous care into developing meaningful syllabi and mentoring students, especially graduate students who are pursuing careers in our field. Like a lot of other commenters here, there are scammy aspects of higher education, people at the top, and accusations of liberal indoctrination. But that's not what the majority of professors want to represent or want our work to be about. Story 10. Kind of a niche thing, but mortgage servicing. The bank doesn't want to foreclose if you start missing payments because then it's just another house they have to pay to maintain and ultimately sell for likely a loss. It's much more viable for the bank and the homeowner to work together to see if you qualify for some form of loss mitigation to either modify your existing loan or vacate in a mutually agreeable way. And in addition, there are a lot of stringent and consistent regulations and laws governing the process from when you miss your first payment up until the end of the default episode, whatever that ending may be. Story 11. So I get all the anger over big pharma and price gouging, but the general distrust of human research that still persists today is unfortunate. I'm not even talking about the distrust from populations who have been harmed by it in the past. Just people who have the misconception that it's a scam or the results are manipulated to make more money, etc. An example of this would be, when Neuralink was in the news a month ago, there would be massively upvoted comments insinuating the volunteer was paid off by Musk. I've got my own concerns about Neuralink, but device drug study participants aren't paid outside of travel lodging reimbursement. The amount of effort that goes into ensuring patient safety and accuracy, correctness of data and research is actually quite huge. And so it's regretful. Some people distrust it so much. But yeah, 
the price gouging definitely contributes to that, as does Tuskegee experiment, as does what they did to Henrietta Lacks and Damp, family, etc. etc. I'm more sad to hear it than tired. Story 12. As a DoorDash driver, I have so many people ask me how I make a living off of it, because I have to pay my own taxes. If you actually keep track of things such as money spent on car maintenance, money spent on gas, money spent on tires, oil changes, ETC, as well as the actual mileage of how much you travel every day, you can deduct almost all of that from your taxes. This year, for example, my taxes would have been over $10,000 until I put in all those various deductions and then ended up having to pay less than 500. It's not as much of a drain to pay your own taxes as you'd think as you are basically legally considered an independent contractor in charge of your own job, which means you can take a lot of the deductions and whatnot that are offered to them legally. DoorDash themselves even encourage the use of a specific app that helps you keep track of mileage and money earned. And I keep track of the other things just in my phone's note app, such as how much I'm spending on gas and repairs. Story 13. I've been a support worker for adults with complex learning and physical disabilities for seven years now. No, you don't just wipe bums for a living. I keep them alive and happy, giving them a quality of life filled with as much independence and choice as they can have. I treat them with dignity and respect, while yes, at times, supporting them with personal care. Because guess what? They can't do it. So someone has to, it's such a tiny part of my job and the least bit interesting. Hardly anyone hears about the love and patience, acceptance and humility the people I support teach me and give me every day. Story 14. Federal civil servant here. The government is not your enemy. The government is thousands upon thousands of normal people, doing normal office jobs, living normal lives. They are not some malicious mono-entity with a sinister agenda. All their jobs literally only exist to serve the greater public interest. Sure, some police officers get power trips and some politicians are shady AF, but those are individuals, not the entire federal entity. Even when it comes to national security, you might flinch at the idea of something like the NSA or DHS existing and meddling and surveilling and whatnot, but you aren't privy to what functions they serve in the bigger picture. People hear surveillance and think, Big Brother is watching. But in reality, they aren't watching you take <laughs> They are watching suspected terrorists and foreign spies, making sure nothing happens. Orgs like that exist so you don't point a finger at a disaster and go, why didn't the government do anything to stop this? Because the answer is often they did, you just didn't know it. Story 15. Teacher unions are ruining education. The things that are ruining education are the ineffective policies set by the state, low standards set by local school districts, and lack of administrative follow-through. States and districts adopt texts and curriculum. That curriculum can say that Earth is flat and the Civil War wasn't actually won, but is just on an extended hiatus. Our district allows kids to make up failed courses in credit recovery and still walk at graduation. A year-long course is condensed into six weeks. A senior this year took 14 classes and earned the same diploma as the kids who worked hard to pass their classes. School administrators do everything they can to not discipline kids because it shows up on our dashboard, a public web page that shows the number of students absent, true and suspended, etc. The result is kids become emboldened and act out even more. All right, folks, that's a wrap. If you like more of this, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also share your thoughts in the comment below. I'll see you in the next video.